good singing. Why don't you stand up with me and let's sing This Is My Father's World. Let's sing together. This is my Father's world, and to my listening ears, all nature sings and round me rings the music of the spheres. This is my Father's world, I rest me in the of rocks and trees and skies and seas is and the wonders rock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Verse 2. This is my father's world. The birds their carol sings. The the lily white declare their maker's praise this is my father's world he shines in all that's fair in the rustling grass i hear him pass he speaks to me everywhere This is my Father's world, oh, let me ne'er forget that though the wrong seems off so strong, God is the ruler yet. Oh, oh. This is my Father's world, the who die shall be satisfied and earth and heaven be one this is my father's world the battle is not done jesus who died shall be satisfied and earth and heaven be Okay, this, uh, see if you remember this, this, uh, commercial from 1965, okay, well, Sorry, guys. Here we go. In the time it, takes, the time to it takes to grow a tree, you can grow, you a, can country. grow a country. Four score, four seven, score. Years, seven years, seven years. Our father, our father. Interrupt this program to bring you a special news bulletin news of attacks of Pearl Harbor, Hawaii, Hawaii by air. By air. Ask what you Ask can do for your country. It only takes it only takes a wine out of the century. century. A flash, a flash, and nothing, and nothing. And even the birds, even won't, the birds come won't come anymore. So the, the Bible speaks about fire as well. And the Bible talks about fire in a destructive way. But it has to do with the mouth. And just like the, the commercial that we, we just saw says that 
all of those years of productivity and all of those years of growth and all of those years of good can be wiped out with a destructive fire with just one match. The Bible gives really, really, really strict warnings about our mouth in the same way. In fact, I, I know no other part of the body that's talked about like this in Scripture. So we have been in, in the book of Matthew, so we've been talking about this sermon of Jesus called the Sermon on the Mount. And we've been looking at it because I think that the time that Jesus spoke that message in is similar in some ways to the, to the unrest that we feel today. Not for the same reasons, but the Jewish people felt great unrest because of what the Romans were doing in the world. And they had just turned their world upside down. But before we get to what Jesus has to say today in the book of Matthew in the Sermon on the Mount, I want to set it up with something that James says about the mouth and fire. And here we go. He says this. Now, I want you to consider what a great forest is set on fire by just a small spark. And then he says, now the tongue also is a fire, a world, look at the description, a world of evil among the parts of the body. So there is no part of the body that the Bible says can cause so much destruction like this, like the mouth. And he goes on, and he says about the tongue, he says, it corrupts the whole body. And it sets the whole course of one's life on fire. And is itself set on fire by hell. Now that's a I mean, you don't get much stronger than that uh, from Scripture about much else. I mean, this is a big deal the Bible is saying. Our tongue. So every single one of us, I don't care who you are, how old you are, how, how long you've like been to church or had a relationship with God, any of that, all of us, carry around with us something that has as much potential damage available to it as a match in a forest, like a dead and dry forest. All of us carry this around on us every day, something with that potential. It's sort of like all of us have a flamethrower right on our body. So he goes on in his reasoning, James says, and he says, now all kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and sea creatures are being tamed and have been tamed by mankind. Look at this next sentence, but no human being, which includes us all, not one person in this room can tame their tongue by themselves. It's that powerful, that potentially destructive. Not one of you and not me by myself can get control of the tongue. How dangerous is this? We have a flamethrower on our body that we cannot control ourselves. Just think about the things that have, the problems that you've had in life, how many of them in one form or fashion have been associated with 
words. Or think of problems going on in the world. How many of them in one way or another have words involved? And then it goes on and, and it says, this, this tongue of yours, this mouth that all of us carry around, it's a restless evil. It's restless. It's like, not only can we not tame it, but it's always like, just ready to roar and ready to break loose. It's like that, it's, it's like that uh, bucking bronco or whatever that you just, like, it's just ready to go. And it's full of deadly poison. And this is on us all. Every single one of us has this. <laughs> right now, it's there, ready to go. So just summing up some of the, the key strong words, and there are many in, in this little passage, it describes this tongue of ours, this mouth as fire. It goes on and says, it's not just like fire, but on you, on me, is the potential for the fire of hell. On us all, there's this restless evil, and there's this deadly poison, and, and it just says evil itself, evil. And it can't be tamed, and this is such a strong statement. The course of one's life is set on fire by the mouth. Wow. Wow. With that as a backdrop now, Jesus decides, as he is talking, as he's talking to a group of Jewish people whose world had been turned upside down, who had the Romans, you know, they, they'd come in and they had turned what used to seem right, it now they turned it into saying it's wrong and what used to be wrong they're saying is right. And it's just a huge mess in their culture and they're being taken advantage of, and they're being persecuted, and you got to know that they're upset, and when we're upset, and we already have something on us that's restless and ready to go at any moment, and you combine that with being upset, not a good combination. And so in this talk that Jesus is giving with the backdrop of the, the Romans and all that's going on, Jesus decides to encourage them to be the adult in the room and watch their mouth. And so he says, and by the way, I've included on the left-hand side just this backdrop of the Romans because this whole Sermon on the Mount is... You know, this is on their mind. This is on the listener's mind. And so Jesus says, now you've heard it. You've heard that it was said to the people long ago, you shall not murder, and anyone who murders will be subject to judgment. And they're all saying, yeah, we've heard that. Now, in just a moment, and it's actually the next slide, the next part of this verse we see that Jesus in this section now is clearly talking about the mouth. And he's talking about the tongue. He's talking about our speech. And so actually this segment is, is in that. And it's talking about our speech. And Jesus is, is including this. And he's saying, what comes out of your mouth can kill people. And Jesus is knowing that the Jewish people have murderous words coming out of their mouth about the Romans. And so this is kind of how he starts it off with this thought of, hmm, I know that you're saying some stuff like, I wish they were dead. Okay. Um, let's say... James is talking about fire just a moment ago. Let's say, let's, let's do like a, a little um, uh, a 
a chart here or a scale, okay? This is, this is zero and this is like the top. And we'll say that the top is a tongue that is exploding in anger. And it's a tongue that's uncontrollable. And it's a tongue that's shouting out murderous stuff. It's just like way out there and totally gone. I mean, it's breathing fire. This is, this is up here. And let's say that down here at this level is Jesus, like controlled and his tongue, you know, has got it together, his mouth, he's, he's good. So Jesus and fire-breathing murderous dragon at the top. Now, let's also say that on a, on a normal day, this is, this is fire-breathing, this is Jesus. On a normal day, let's say that you're about here, just let's say. Uh, you're about here, and, and this includes like the things that make you mad and the things that the people that make you mad and the situations in life make you mad. You're just a, a little bit below halfway, let's say. It's your worst. And then let's also add another degree. Let's say like down here is how you speak to your friends and your family. It's still not perfect. Like here is, here's like zero, and here, you're here. Here's like how you speak to to those when you kind of lose it, and here is your family and friends. What happens is when we go through a period of being upset in life, and when we go through a time in which we're going through now where, where we're just upset, we're aggravated, there's so much tension, what happens is this top degree tends to rise. And when it rises, the bottom one also rises with it. It just happens that way. So the things that we, let, let's say we were here. Again, this is like fire breathing. This is Jesus. We're about here. The things that we used to say about people that we're mad at in situations, not very good, but, you know, it's, okay, it's not great. But now when we're upset over a period of time, like the Jews were with the Romans, it kind of escalates, and we find ourselves saying things that we really never dreamed of saying. I mean, we're, we've been mad at whoever or the situation for a while, but now be, just because we're mad at life, our heart's upset, that tends to raise, and we say things that we just we used to not say. And, and we have more permission, it seems, in our mind, because everybody else is saying so many bad things. We kind of raise that, but what happens is this also raises so what we used to try to not say at people like in our family and our friends, now it even goes, so we, it goes higher. So now we start saying things to our friends and family and even church members that we never dreamed of saying before. And it's all due to this tension that's going on. The whole thing raises up. So Jesus says in the first part here, now you heard that it was said like you shouldn't be up here. You should not be up here and be fire-breathing, breathing murderous, talking to people. But I tell you, I've noticed there's a problem, and that is that even your bottom level, how you speak to your brother and sister, how you speak to your family members, it's even increased. And I've noticed that, that you kind of get more angry with your brother and your sister, and I just want you to know that, you have to be really, really careful because you're saying things to your family. You're saying things maybe to, to fellow believers. You're saying things that you never dreamed of saying that you wouldn't have normally said before, but because the top has risen, so has everything else, and your mouth just is a little bit more out of control than it's really normally, uh, than it normally is. So, all right. He goes on, he talks a little bit more about this bottom level. And he says, now, if, if you say to a brother, sister, or family member, now this next word, we don't really know what it means. It's something in the Jewish culture, biblical culture, that was super bad. And so it says, now, if you say to someone at this level, think like you would nor never normally say raka to them. We don't know what that, what that means. Um, but if you say that, you know that it's answerable to the court. So evidently, there was a word in the Jewish culture 
that was so bad that they could actually be taken to the Jewish court over saying that word. So if, whatever that might be. So they're, you know, the people that are reading Scripture are probably even surprised to see this in print, that kind of word. Like, like what in the world is that doing there in, in Scripture? So it's saying, like, so if you say something like raka to your brother and sister, like, yeah, I would never say that. I would never say that. But Jesus is saying, but you, I've heard you kind of say that now that the level has been raised. And you would have never dreamed of saying things that you do now, but you're, you're just, you've been upset for a long time, and the agitation's been going on so long that things, things kind of have risen up the scale. And I've heard some of you say, Raka, and you know you could be taken to court over that. And then he goes on, he says, like, and anyone who says you fool, Again, no, this is not in how we would normally say it, although that's not a nice word. But somehow, fool to them um, meant it, it was so demeaning, so demeaning to someone to say fool. It was even worse than what we would say. And so he just says, what about the bottom line? It's, it's, it's going up. And I hear you say things like you're calling one another fool. And these are your brothers and your sisters or your church members. And you would have never thought of saying those things. But you've been so agitated for so long at the Romans. The whole thing is going up. You see, I've kind of alluded to this. But uh, there's a real bad combination happening here with the Jewish people, and that is that there was this atmosphere of anger because the Romans were just giving them such a hard time. They felt bad about everything. They felt bad about being mistreated. They, f they felt bad if, about the fact that the Romans were ab abusing them. They were making fun of their God. Everything was bad. So there was this atmosphere where everybody was angry for a long time. And what happens then, again, is everything kind of goes up. And the things you never thought of saying, you start to say. So there's a bad combination of an atmosphere of anger and the fact that there's a part of your body that can't be tamed. Bad combination. Because on a normal day, when everything is great, a normal day where things are perfect in the world. When, where, when is that? But what, what it used to be, okay? Just a better, better world. On, in normal times, that tongue still wants to be bad. On a good day, like you could be having a good day, and all of a sudden your tongue and your mouth, and you say stuff like, what in the world did I just say? That's on a good day because you've got a restless part of your body that's just anxious to do bad. But you combine that with the bad stuff that's going on in the world over a long period of time, like the Jews had with the Romans, very bad combination, a restless evil in your body, a, a wor world full of fire, something that could corrupt the rest of your life. It could set the, the whole world of relationships on fire. You combine that with an already angered spirit. And the mouth really becomes a scary thing. So Jesus says this to this crowd of people. And then he ends that thought with this. So therefore, if you come to church one day and and you realize that, because like you're just sitting in the presence of God, and you hadn't thought about it, but now you realize because God is speaking to you, you realize that your mouth, it used to be like here, and now it's up here. And even the people that you love, and you would never dream of saying things like that, it's actually gone up the ladder too. You realize that your mouth has been guilty. And your words haven't been good. If you want to come in to worship and you want to start worshiping God and your mouth is not where it ought to be, then, then I, I'll tell you what you do. Jesus is saying, like before you get all 
involved in worship and you think everything's great between you and God, before you start doing all of that, go and apologize to that person first. And then, and then, and then start worshiping God. Uh, let me just read it. Therefore, if you're offering your gift at the altar and there remember that your brother or sister has something against you. Interesting wording. It doesn't say, and remember that your brother and sister offended you. It says, and, and you remember that you offended somebody. And you didn't make that right. And it's just sort of hanging out there. Before you try to get all serious about God and act like everything's right between you and God and worship God, before you do that, you need to go and make it right with that person. Now, here's the summary. Reconciliation comes before worship. If if God is talking to you right now and he's talking about your levels, you know, this probably isn't even really, if you were here and Jesus is here, Jesus would probably say, let's work on that. Let's, let's get that more like me. But in reality, if you're like up here, Jesus is really saying, you know, if you've been talking bad and you've been saying stuff about people you love or about the Romans, You've been saying stuff about people that you don't really care about, and it's you've just been like your mouth has just been running. Then you should really talk to me about that and ask me for forgiveness, and then let's worship. Right now, I mean, like you could just talk to God and say, God, I'm out of control a little bit. And I understand why it's because I, I live in a time and a culture that everything is so negative and mean and everybody else is saying so many bad things and everybody else kind of lives up here. And I didn't feel so bad because I'm down here, but God, it's, it's out of control and I've got to stop it. That's what I would encourage you to do right now. I'm going to have Jeff play. Um, the, the words uh, of, a, of a song, um, Softly and Tenderly, that, that uh, it talks about Jesus just softly calling us back home. If our mouth has got out of order and we're out of line, and it doesn't have to just do with the mouth. It could be something else in your life. But Jesus now is gently calling us back into line. We're going to take communion together in a moment. Um, we have... We have cups that are uh, pre-sealed and they're, they're good and right for this time. But uh, we're going to take communion. But what I want you to do is during this verse, this plate of this song, this first verse, I just want you to reflect. I want you to think, are you, is there anything that you need to settle before you go on and worship? And I'm going to ask... Uh, Pastor John to to come up, and he's going to lead us through a time of communion. So this first verse, I just want you to reflect, and then um, then Pastor John will, will lead you into communion after that first verse. So reflect. i 
Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of the Spirit, born of His Spirit. Washed in his blood, this is my story, and this is my story, this is my song, raising my Savior all the day long, this is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect submission, perfect delight. The visions of rapture now burst on my side. Angels descended. Angels descending, ring from above. Let me hear you. Echoes of mirth, better, and whispers of love. Sing it out now. And this is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior. All the day long, oh, this is my story, this is my song, raising my Savior, all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I am my Savior, am happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, watching and waiting, looking above, filled with His good. I'm lost in his love. Oh, this is my story. This is my song. Raising my Savior all the day long. And this is my story. This is my song.
goes like this. I am holding on to faith. Can you want to give this a little more try? Because I know you'll make a way. I don't always understand. I don't always get to see. But I will believe it. I will believe it. Cause you make mountains move. You make giants fall. And you use songs of praise to shake prison walls. I will speak to my fear. I will preach to my doubt that you were faithful then. You'll be faithful now. Back to the verse, and I'm standing on your word. And I'm standing on your word. Calling heaven down to earth And you will fight my enemies And this will end in victory But I will believe it I will believe it You make mountains You make mountains move You make giants fall And you use songs of praise risen walls I will speak to my fear and I will preach to my doubt that you were faithful then you'll be faithful now that you were faithful then you'll be faithful now and I know yeah I know you'll never fail Yes, I know, yes, I know, you never will. And I know, really know, you never fail. Yes, I know, really know, you never will. You make mountains, you make mountains move. You make giants fall, and you use songs of praise. Shake prison walls, and I will speak to my fear, and I will preach to my doubt. But you were faithful then, you'll be faithful now. Did you make mountains move? You make giants fall, and you use songs of praise to shake prison walls. I will speak to my fear, and I will preach to my doubt. And you were faithful then, you'll be faithful now. And you were faithful then, you'll be faithful One more time. now. And you'll be faithful then, you'll be faithful now. Let's stand together, and we'll have a prayer together, and then we shall close for today. God, I thank you again for this group of people. I thank you for their desire to come and worship you. Um, I thank you for our congregation who aren't all able to be here, but we think of we think of each one, and we f- we ask God that you would help to keep us connected together even though we can't all physically be in the same room like we used to be. Keep us connected together, Lord, until that day when we are all able to come back together. I pray that you would keep us safe. You would keep us um, safe physically. Um, that you would keep us in, in good health. We pray for our, our young people who will um, there's so many changes that's going on in their life and so many things up in the air about school and all of that. I pray, God, that you would give them a a sense of peace in their heart, that you are going to work all of this out. And the same goes for all the parents who are trying to figure what to do. And I pray that you would give them wisdom as well. We, We pray that you would watch over 
again, our, our seniors in this congregation, those that are older, that, um, uh, that, 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 again, that you would keep them just extra healthy as well. Thank you, God, for this congregation. Thank you for this service. In Jesus' name, we've met. Amen. Have a great rest of your day, folks.